Like, amazing. Fucking amazing. Do you know, when the Russians pulled out, there was a three-year-long war where hundreds of thousands of people died. Like, these fucking morons want that just so they can feel, feel good about it. This has been an amazing... It's been an amazing time. You have people who, you know... Talk about like decolonizing their job for a phone app that loses eight billion dollars a year. Uh, literally, just wanting to recolonize a place, uh, just so they can feel good. This is literally just so everyone who, uh, oh, you know, we have an obligation to the women there. We, we, you know, this is sad. Everyone who thinks there's something else, they think that they're not just. They didn't just grow up to be the fucking imperialist their parents are. No, what you're feeling is imperial humiliation. That's the only thing yep. you're feeling. You don't give a fuck about any of these people. You didn't give a fuck about the boys our allies were raping. You didn't give a fuck about the women who were being killed by our bombs. You didn't give a fuck about any of this. What you're feeling now is just the feeling that you have when your team lost, and you won't fucking admit that to yourself. That's it. These people are so fucking brainwashed. I, I mean, it's so... People got mad at that Corey Robin thing when he said 90% of... Corey <laughs> Robin. Oh, <fuck>. Corey <laughs> Robin. Matt disappeared again. <laughs> That Corey, that Corey Robin thing where he's like pointed out that like pretty much 90% of Americans supported the war in fucking Afghanistan and people got upset with him because of course people take everything personally. They thought he was personally saying like, oh, it was your responsibility to stop it when you were like 12. Like I get it. He put it in like the most combative way possible, but I can't really criticize anyone for that. But his point was that it's incredibly easy to whip up like, Every American, including like liberal educated people who pride themselves on you know pacifism, believing in a better, more progressive way of life, it's very easy to whip these people up, and there are a hundred different reasons you can get people to cheer for the same team committing the exact same crimes every fucking time and we saw that we saw that we got we got what seventy percent of our fucking country wants and most of the, you know, you expect to see like MAGA dipshits talk about how how sad this makes them. It's the fall of Saigon, blah blah blah. That's expected. Um, and you know, of course, they're free to fucking go up over there and kill two thousand of theirs for one of theirs, cry about it for the rest of their lives, and then buy a fucking pit bull, or else they'll kill their wife. But the people in the more liberal quarters. No, we haven't learned anything. We're still the exact same fucking people. We just got sick of it. We've just gotten sick of the wars because we got too scared that even when we were killing thousands of theirs, both local resistance, uh, civilians, whoever, and you know, a few of ours would die. It was too traumatic and hard for Americans to even think about. We're still this insane country with an insane desire to fucking invade places and, ch and subjugate places and this past weekend, I've seen so fucking much of that. Just as for the comment about um, why aren't uh, Afghan men fighting for their women in their country? I mean, well, it seems like a lot of them are, but they're fighting for the Taliban against us. So, I mean, like, I, like you got, you mean, so you, you got what you asked for there. Let's say that there is like a unified armed resistance against the Taliban. For whatever reason, that's supposed to be good. That instead of just the Taliban rolling through everywhere, every, everyone just kind of surrendering, including Tajiks and Shia who previously fought them standing down, which I think is pretty conspicuous, um, that they do fight. And you do lose 300, 400, 500,000 people. They're not going to win. No one thinks they would win. They wouldn't. Even the most deluded people in the world know they're not going to win. Well, yeah, I mean, like, this is... Uh, uh, these people, it's just... It's, it's an endless... Uh an endless series of excuses, but really, as you said, to start out this show, an endless, an endless series of demands that other people die for their vanity. Right. It's just, and it's all about, I want to feel good all the time. I don't want to think about this. And you know what? Don't fucking worry. You'll forget this shit in three weeks like you do every other goddamn thing. Yeah, so stop, stop sweating, fucking crying. Man. Why don't you speed it up and take a fucking Ativan? <laughs> Yeah, just like what uh, binge watch Ted Lasso and call me in the morning. <laughs> You'll be fine. But just the... The, 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 just like, you know, following the news this weekend and certainly like, you know, on a Monday when everyone gets back into the office, just I'm um, sort of uh, taking in the tenor of, uh, you know, like the, the media's response to um, the, you know, complete collapse of, of all of our efforts over the last 20 years in Afghanistan. Um, I think we're seeing a really like 
odd and like very clear like break dissonance between the imperial state and like the national state, like America as an empire and the people who care about that and run it. And then like a country that's still dealing with COVID two years into this bullshit. Cause like, I swear to God, the only people who are fucking weeping over this Saigon moment for America are war reporters. It's just, yeah. it's journalists. Like, and, and like, they're all like, Oh, this, this will, this is a dark moment in American history. This is a stain that will last with our national honor forever. It's just like, who are you talking about here? You're like, you're talking about yourself, not everyone else, man. What and, on, and, what honor are you fucking talking about? Are you talking about the parts of our country where it is Afghanistan, but just for young black men? Are you talking about like just the half of this country where like the state vaccination rate is like thirty fucking percent? Yeah, and, and it's doing never going to get better to actually get it to people who would want it. So we all have to pretend that it's it's all mega shitheads who are refusing. To forget the fact that we don't have the medical infrastructure to get it to people who need it and want it. Yeah, no, this is this is literally just them crying that they have to reorient their careers in a few years all to pretend to be an expert on another country. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and it's just it, it, it's been quite a spectacle because like whether you're, whether you're talking about like the entire news media who like if you, if you, if you watched any TV at all this weekend like it was like MSNBC and CNN were like uh, just they were cooking Joe Biden for this. They were mm-hmm. like, you know, how could we have gotten this so wrong? Uh, what a disaster. This will haunt him. It's like you could forget that um, overwhelmingly the people who voted for Trump and the people who voted for Biden. It's like the one thing they do agree on that they don't think America should be in Afghanistan anymore. And like and the, the idea that like, oh, like the consequences of us leaving, like the fact that they the idea that like a regular Amer- Americans and I'm talking about voters here are going to hold this against Biden or are, are like are are fucking feeling the pangs of fucking guilt and anxiety the way like Jake Tapper is right now. I mean, it's like, like I said, there's a, there's a real like chasm here in between uh, the media and like, look, the media are going to fucking, they're going to put the screws to Biden over this. And I just think like the, all of these people who I'm talking about, like the think tankers, uh, the, the, the journalists, like the, the media, the newspapers, like all, like every, everyone who has invested and promoted with this war in Afghanistan for the last 20 years, they are all, like by their own insane standards, complete failures. And yeah, it's like, uh-huh. what are they going to do? Like hold themselves accountable? No. What they're going to do is that they're going to hold the American public accountable. And they have all decided that we are lacking both in our commitment to continue this war, but also that we are somehow um, immoral and dishonorable for like not caring about the people of Afghanistan as much as they do. Like that's the point of view of like the, the, uh, the, allegedly like uh, objective media but the partisan media is just going to pick the other president yeah. depending on mm-hmm. the party so like if you're a partisan democrat this is simple this was trump's fault and then if you're a very opportunistic republican who was d- with trump doing the withdrawal when he was carrying out that policy it now says it's Biden's fault. it's great you get to just pass it back and forth and never admit the actual fundamental rot at the basis of the thing but, they're, but if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to be partisan, you can only blame America. We're the only ones left to point the finger. Right. I put the, the finger squarely at you, the viewer. Now, at the risk of being unpopular, this reporter places the blame for all of this squarely on you, the viewers. Can we drop that uh, Ken Brockman uh, bit in there, Chris? <laughs> the thing I particularly love uh, about blaming Americans themselves solely for this is when it comes from think tankers who... You look at who funds their workplace, who's signing their checks. It's always Qatar, the UAE, or Saudi Arabia. Yes. So you have to wonder when uh, Sunni, the people we should have gone to war with after nine eleven. <laughs> well, no, like we shouldn't. Have I know, gone of course to war, not. But like, yeah, I mean, like, I did. You see the thing about how American troops would send out helicopters to get fucking Burger King because they refuse to eat the local food. No. I mean, that's something... They're doing Uber Eats with the (laughs) Chinook? Jesus, like, Jesus, Jesus Christ. This country is fucking falling apart. This is what we were doing for 20 goddamn fucking years. Yeah, just absolute imperial grotesquery. And the funny thing is, is America, yeah, they would like to leave. America would have been fine leaving any time in the past fucking decade. The reason we didn't is because it was paid for people. It had a political purpose. It was a reason for it to keep going. And now I think we, we want to answer the question like, well, why now? I think it boils down to Trump had like this genuine desire to push 
because he was outside of the consensus and blob. He took the idea of getting out of Afghanistan seriously, and so he actually pursued it, and he got somewhere. He got a deal with the fucking Taliban, and that created momentum that Biden would have had to put out the stops in order to arrest, because in those last couple of years, the Taliban was making huge inroads. They were, that's why they were able to take over the place overnight, because these guys had all been bought off already. The arrangements had already been uh, uh, made. So to stop that would have been a big more investment. So at a moment when you realize nobody's actually paying attention, you can pull out. And like when you look at how dramatic and catastrophic it was, and you you think, damn, they couldn't have wanted that. At the end of the day, it still serves their purpose because now instead of the momentum in foreign policy being around, hey, how about we get out of Afghanistan? Now it's we don't want to let Kabul fall again. Yeah. Every new thing will now have uh, the, 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 the momentum now in the public sphere is going to be around where we need to reassert American power. And then and now we're not going to be talking about getting out of Afghanistan anymore because we're going to have this this propaganda victory to, to wave around at everybody. It serves the same purpose internationally as the fucking uh, January 6th insurrection serves domestically. A way to press the state forward into imperialism overseas and a greater... Uh, domestic uh, imperialism uh here absolutely and uh and that's why i mean that's why this is sort of a a very very dangerous moment for uh the rest of the world because you know when you when you see all of these uh, all the like the the side by side photos of the chinook helicopter in saigon and kabul and it's this saigon moment this moment of national humiliation it's like poetry at rhyme <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, Ho Chi Minh's a funnier character <laughs> than, we're, than we're used to. We've really got to get him right. <laughs> um, uh, no, but like, it, yeah, this moment of national humiliation. And it's just like, well, okay, once again, like, who's being humiliated here? Yeah. It's like, it, it's, it's the people who started this war and fought it. And it's just like, is, is, was Saigon humiliating for the United States because we, like, you know, uh, left in disgrace? I mean, like, no, the, the humiliation is that we killed four and a half million people in Southeast Asia for a war that absolutely never should have been fought in the first place. And, but this moment now is like, look, the Saigon moment did not defeat the United States of America. Yeah. Like we, we suffered absolutely no negative consequences. And, it's, and again, we like won most the Cold of our, War off that exactly, shit. We won our Cold yeah. War. Like, like most of our national, like our, our actual like blood curdling Cold War objectives had been met by the time like that Saigon we, fell. Begin, we absolutely begin with. got, we got the offensive rebound there after Vietnam, after we yeah. missed that shot. Our biggest, our biggest like domestic consequence, like for the big, for the whole picture was that like the army lost some of its prestige for like ten years? Yeah, yeah. They, and they made movies where uh, it was it Southern to be a troop. By Walter and Hill. then a bunch of people yeah. made up some bullshit about soldiers getting spit on, which has literally never been documented to have ever happened one time. No, just completely fucking made up. But what I mean because is it's, like, it's our yeah, it was our our tragedy. I mean, what I mean is like yeah, like dude, dude, this is a you know like a, a big blow to the you know the the image of the u.s empire or just like people's belief in it but it like i mean is this really going to uh like hasten the collapse of the u.s empire i mean i don't know i think if you think about it as an american empire at this point yeah like it looks like oh america's ability to be you know the the hegemon here is is threatened but there is no outside force threatening it there's no communism there's no other organized opposition to it uh, within it or outside of it really so when we see america falling like this it's because other places are picking up the slack and and the global system is sort of equalizing power outward first it took out the engine uh, of american industry in the 70s uh and which has basically which hollowed us out as an economy and we have been you know just being the, we have been the policemen of the world as that's been our function within the capitalist system. But now, thanks to technology, thanks to the world flattening up, we are less necessary. The technology of our military is so detached uh, from like the economy of the United States that it can just float with the global money supply, the petrodollar. And so that means things get worse for Americans and worse for everybody else, uh, but not productively, it seems. Well, I mean, like the fall of America is never going to be like, you know, like no one ever uses the dollar and like the cities are like in three times the disrepair they are now we're gonna necessarily. E we're gonna get I mean, eased we in we're gonna get eased into the pot is the thing. Right, right, right. We are being well, eased and, into the pot. Right. And there there's but there's always gonna be a need for like a consumer base of three hundred to four hundred right. million yeah, pigs nowhere else who buy all who yet. bought yeah. who buy all the treats in the world. Like no one there's no there's we no have a role. 
there's no interest there's no interest in getting rid of that no. which is why like china hawkery is so weird yeah. i mean why would they want to get rid of this well the thing is is i think they would argue no they might keep us on the treat leash but while also removing our last vestiges of uh freedom in the like Getting rid of home ownership, for example, making us go into the. We're pods. getting rid of home ownership. Exactly, but they're We're, saying that we got, we did that. That's you, dude. <laughs> well, that's the thing you is that, that their answer is uh, go with the a- epic national-based bourgeois who let all this happen in the first place. That's yeah. their only response. Yeah, I mean, you know, for treat lovers everywhere, America will never stop being a nation of treats. Yeah, that much no, is true. Treats will always be there. It's like, guess what? If you get to eat be in the pod and you get to eat the bugs you'll thank your fucking lucky stars i mean yeah or you just already are in the pod you're yeah, already no that's what's the thing the, what's, what's, what's the you're already between, in the pod you're just praying you're not going to get kicked out of it what's the difference between the bugs and the fucking meat slurry you're eating from mcdonald's what's the fucking difference there there's none you just like your flavor of bugs yeah no absolutely it's all it's i'll just it's an aesthetics it's like yeah what do i want my dystopian uh you know uh uh, biopolitically controlled uh, uh, he- neo bug lifestyle. What do I want it to taste like? Do I want it it's to the- be like epic rockabilly? Do I want to be a neo trad uh, groiper? You can do any of it. It's all available. I-, I said like if you're if you're paying attention to the media, like both partisan and objective, like it just seems like everyone is kind of putting the screws to Biden over this, despite the fact that like you know this is supported by probably seventy percent of the country. But like, uh, don't you think that like Biden, I mean, like these same people that we're talking about here, like, don't you think that they should be thanking Biden more than anyone for like being willing to take Absolutely. the L on this? Absolutely. Yeah. Because like, Jesus he's, like he's taking the L on he's behalf of this every, shit. like I'm saying, like he's taking the L on behalf of every American president since Jimmy fucking Carter started all this <laughs> bullshit. Yes. By, like, and by the way, they started supporting the Taliban and the Mujahideen before the Soviets invaded yes, Afghanistan. Yeah, um, that is that is the Polak. That is you put a Polak in. At uh, yeah. the NSC, not a good, not good move. <laughs> Talk about sc- screwing in the light bulb backwards. Like, yeah, like no, he's taking the L for every American president who came before him. But more than anything, he is taking the L for any president that comes after him, especially the next one, Democrat or Republican. Absolutely. Because like, wait, remember when Obama did the surge in oh, Afghanistan? Yeah. He did yep. the surge in Afghanistan. By the way, who recommended that he pull out and not listen to the generals uh, when and that was happening in 2011? Joe Biden. And well, Joe, and by and fucking Obama said, well, here's a ball, Joe. I perhaps you'd like to bounce it. And he just yeah. he was serious. <laughs> and he listened to the serious people, not doddering old, you know, that doddering old ward healer. Fuck him. No, Biden was right. And he wants to affirm that he was fucking right. Or he thinks it is 2011 and he's just recommending this to Obama. And then it ends up happening anyway. That's also a possibility. Yeah. Well, Joe is the perfect guy for this. Oh, yeah. One hundred percent. I was talking about this with someone. Someone uh, unexpected told me that they like felt bad for Joe today. And it's like, I see what he means because like, even if you know fully who Joe is, what Joe's done, uh, it's hard not to like see a sham shambling old man yeah. just waltz out there and go, I'm a loser. We lost. Yeah. It's hard not Look. to feel sad. Okay. Totally disconnected. But you know what? But, He's telling the then, truth. But then, but He's then I. Told, but then, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. Then I. What I realized is like, no. This is literally what he's always wanted and what he's always been. Joe's always been the guy who goes out there and says, "We lost. Yep. I lost. My son died. <laughs> yep. You know, I fucking lost my family. Feel bad for me. He's that guy. Absolutely. He's this our is, senator. And he was. And he before he lost his family in that tragic accident, he thought. I need to be president. I can be president. This is what I'm supposed to do. I'm the youngest senator. You know, I, it's a fucking gilded path for me. And then, you know, all these things happen in his life. And throughout his career, he's looking Americans dead in the face and going, sorry, you lost. You can't declare bankruptcy anymore. Sorry, you lost. I'm sending your dad to prison forever. Sorry, you fucking lost. And now, after he's lost so much, him personally, and he's for everything from his loved ones to people younger than him to fucking his brain. He could finally go out there and go, no, we lost. Yeah. This is really, he and thought he, he was training, real for, this. He 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 was training for this moment, his whole life being young in the Senate or being, or, or being like the most charming guy in college and wanting it so bad. He's been training for this by being a fucking loser. Yeah. 
And so he's the best at it, and now he gets to do what he's always wanted to do. It couldn't have been anyone else. Anyone. No one could have done this. Yeah, because he's the one who can make you believe it, because he's a fucking loser. He has felt pain. He feels pain as he, he dishes it out to you, as opposed oh, to a yeah. smug fucker like uh, Bill Clinton or Obama, who's like, hey, sucks to be you, bitch. See you on the flippy flop. I'll be at Martha's Vineyard with my homies. <laughs> Obama could never come out and say we lost. No. No, you've spent your entire life making sure it's other people, not you. Joe has been out there losing. He's just taking it on the chin. <laughs> he fucking plagiarized Neil Kinnon. Lost. <laughs> I know. The guy who got the his entire ass kicked country. by Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> For like 40 years, everyone was like, you suck, Joe. And he was like, mm. <laughs> And Can you now, imagine how yeah. much how condescended he was by the Obama people? Oh my god! Uh, he probably yeah. didn't notice most of it because you know his brain was already going a little bit. But just what he could have just by animal instinct picked up, like their contempt for him, all those yes. smart, smug young fuckers who knew he was the old white guy who had to be on the ticket to keep the hillbillies in line. But the point is that, like, for, like for the for the people who are like I said, like for every every person at any level of like government, think tank, or media. That helped author the last, the, the fucking t- two decade long nightmare of this fucking disaster. Like, they feel, I mean, regardless of whether, like, it has any bearing in actual reality, and it certainly won't, they'll face no consequences for their own personal, professional lives, and certainly not their own health and safety. Um, but these people, they do feel defeated. And, like, they, they, they feel wounded by this, and I expect them to lash out. The thing is, I expect them to, like, I think the, the thing that's different now, though, is that they're, they're lashing out. I think even more intensely because uh, they, I don't think the American public is following them in the way that, in the ways that they're used to like the sort of Pavlovian conditioning that they're so used yeah. to about, Everyone's about waving out. that bloody flag because dude, this country is, like I said, we're two years into this COVID pandemic. Yeah. Like just every community is shrinking. Like nobody is, has a fucking job. There's like their, their kids are about to go back to school during the middle of all this shit. Like the, the idea that we're just like, oh god, like you know, we just we, we better uh, just let's get let's get the convoy going to to, to fucking the Kabul airport right now. It's like, uh, okay, yeah, we, you know, as podcasters, you know, we've we've received the call, we've received the call to action. We're going. Uh, uh, fucking uh, Tyler Ninja Blevins is going. Uh, Hassan <laughs> Piker, uh, Ry- Ry- Riley Reed, Keemstar, uh, Dasher from Red Scare. We're all getting in the. <laughs> we're all getting in the Gary Taseman Memorial Dirigible, <laughs> and we're doing a, a convoy of hope to the Kabul airport right now. You guys yeah. saw my. You guys saw my favorite guy, right? The uh, the forty two year old British photographer who's like. I want to sign up for the army now. <laughs> yeah, now, now that I'm in my mid 40s, <laughs> yeah. I can safe to say I never thought about joining the military um until now, but like the, this is That guy's no, me. I the, love the, him. The, 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 the whole thing. This is just it, uh, America and Britain especially. This is the hold me back bro of like yeah. inter, of international foreign, like of international affairs and and war and peace. Hold me back bro. Hold me back from enlisting. Well, it's because like they do feel defeated the same way someone would if like they couldn't get it up for the escort, which is what these guys are basically. <laughs> yeah, 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 yep. No, that's like, exactly that's just it. it. Like they're just like in the bathroom, just like punching the goddamn mirror. <laughs> it's my big dick. I'm ready to fuck now. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're uh, they're Mikey doing curls. You're gonna do great at sex. You're gonna do great at sex. Yeah, you got some of these uh, <laughs> walnuts. I hear they're pretty good for <laughs> you know. <laughs> Well, we used to, you know, after 9-11, I think we were Dan Quinn. We were actually taking part in the world. We were going around oh, yeah. we were disturbing people with our bizarre tirades. And we were running activities. faster than any white boy had ever done before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now we're like a certain goblin who lives under a staircase in Manhattan. <laughs> Man, we really were Dan Quinn. We were just yeah. really very self-absorbed. That To this day, it's still cringe. In 2002, uh, at the Salt Lake Olympics... The U.S. before all the other countries, they brought out a 9/11 flag, like a burn flag from Ground Zero. We were so it's funny like, why with are that you shit. doing this, dude? Chill the fuck out. It's the fucking Olympics. We're watching people ski. It's like a guy who had a, like skin cancer and just had to take like chemo lotion. Yeah. Every day for the next ten years, I had a brush with death. Yeah. It's just like, but you have to like, it has to be everybody else's problem. Yeah. Like, hey, we're just here to have a good time, man. Sorry that our foreign policy had, didn't directly lead to a fucking massive terrorist attack on your own country. One day when this finally ends, which isn't going to be now, I don't even know if it'll be in my lifetime, but like one day, one day far in the future, 
it, when it's totally over, I think there will be like an interesting, you know, academic debate debate to be had. Like, which was the worst like globe spanning empire? Was it UK? Was it us? Blah blah blah. And I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I don't think the book is fully written on us, but I do know this. No one has been or ever will be as annoying as we were. You, it's, yeah, you are now listening to the nation's number one entirely pro Biden. I mean, we dude, have joined. Oh my we God. have who joined else? the riding with Biden <laughs> who else, movement. Who else is there to stand we, up like, to the guy? Like, we're not, you know, we're not these other places that were like, you know, when he was first bubbling, uh, like seventy-eight years ago. They were like, yeah, Biden rocks. When he was doing all the things that suck, they were like, Biden rocks. When, you know, he was plagiarizing for Neil Kinnock, they were like, that's, uh, Neil Kinnock actually won. They lied. Uh, <laughs> you know, we weren't there. We, we weren't there because, like, a true friend, like, criticizes their friends when they, you know, they won't let them leave the house in certain outfits. Like, you look bad, Joe. But now that he's, like, literally the only president who's fighting the deep state. Donald Trump talked about fighting the deep state, but they were like, "We're gonna, you're gonna look like a loser, and we're gonna kill your family." And then Joe, Joe was head. like, "I've looked like a loser my entire life, and like that already, like everything bad that can happen. Well, you're gonna kill me. I'm gonna die like tomorrow. <laughs> what are you gonna kill me? You're gonna kill my yeah. family? Yeah, I fucking dare been you. there, yeah. done that. And, yeah, the good son's already dead. Yeah. Oh, we're yeah. Gonna, yeah. So who was that? Was that Ev? Who's like, we're gonna plant drugs on Hunter? <laughs> <laughs> it's like too late. No, he's he's fighting the deep state because he's like, who knows why? You know, it doesn't matter. Maybe he thinks it's like 2011, like you said, well, that he's he's telling Obama to pull out again. He doesn't realize that he's Obama now. Maybe he thinks it's Vietnam. Maybe he thinks we're pulling out of the Philippines. <laughs> There's no way of telling, but he is. What's important is okay. he's fighting the deep state, and the most important. He's fulfilling what LaRoche was never able to do. He's fighting Britain. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh my God. Okay. When I like this is like an hour before we started recording, but when I saw the news item about how he left Boris Johnson's bitch ass on read for 36 hours and he was <laughs> yes. just like, Oh, I'm gonna pick up the phone and this Afghanistan shit is a shambles, mate. And Biden was just like you're, you're, click. You're climb a pass. <laughs> click. Britain's yeah. experiencing Suez Canal part two right now, <laughs> and they're losing their fucking minds, and Biden is just like I'm, I'm getting an ice cream, man. I'll call you up tomorrow. Yeah. Biden's going to call him back and be like, my granddaughter gave me some of the oatmeal ice cream. I said, how the hell did you get oats in the ice cream? That's not going to taste good. You're talking about something at breakfast. You're not eating until 3, 4, even 5 p.m. But don't let Jill, Dr. Joe Biden, you know, my great wife, know that I'm eating ice cream before she makes her chicken parmesan. That's why it says chicken parmesan. Chicken parmesan. <laughs> okay, no, but like, uh, that was the that was the fucking cherry on top of the Sunday because like I swear to God like what Biden has shown me this last week is that like I, you know I said this like half jokingly but like I mean like just for this issue alone like by hook or by crook if he sticks to his guns on this he will go down as the best American president of my lifetime if not one of the greatest of all time because like yes. who else other than him could have done this I mean look they would have killed Bernie Sanders before he even got a chance to do it but like yeah. Donald Trump wouldn't have done it. His handsome, no. beautiful, his handsome, beautiful generals. He was too afraid of them. Yeah, he was too Donald fucking Trump seduced by them. Donald Trump doesn't even like his family, and they were like, "We'll kill your family." And he was like, "Oh, oh no." <laughs> no, I think what they, all they had, I don't even think they got to that point with him. All they, because I think he definitely wanted to pull out before election day, two thousand twenty, as look at I did, populist thing. I got out of Afghanistan, but they told him that this would happen, and that oh, we're gonna get run out of the country, and you're gonna look like a loser. And because he's a fucking pussy, he freaked. He said, "Okay, never mind." And so, even though he had made the deal with the Taliban and he had made it helped make conditions on the ground so that a pullout was inevitable, he didn't get any of the fucking benefit out of it. He just kept dragging along. You know, he would have stayed dragging along for yeah. the next four years if he'd gotten back in there because they just would have kept telling him, "You look like a loser." Exactly. And then, and, this, then this, and so he bitch acidly said no. They say it to Biden. He's like, yeah, fuck off. I don't care. I'm a loser. Like, yeah. this, 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 gets, this, gets, this gets this gets to like what Felix you said in our last episode that I think really like gets to the heart of the matter is that like Trump like despite the fact that like you know he he released all the leaders of the Taliban and like <laughs> <laughs> just, awesome. yeah like negotiated this exact pullout. You're exactly right. Because like he he knows that like he doesn't want to get involved in wars because he doesn't want to be a loser. But when like when he under like they were like yes you will look like a loser when these very news footage that we're seeing now from Kabul is happening. And he was too afraid of being described as in the media 
a loser. And what you said about Biden is so true, is that like he is America's loser. And and like what you said about like to be like this whole like the based Biden thing is like the one president who's like actually making a decision that does put America first. The thing about being based in America is like such a, like a it's such a dumb phrase that's become like, you know, the Internet jargon that like just is poisoning our minds. But like really the truthful thing that it does describe is that to be based in 21st century America means to be a loser. Yes. Like it's, but it's to be a loser who is comfortable with being a loser. And it's like uh, Alex Nichols, what he said, I've been thinking about it all week, where he said, being based means that you're a protagonist of an Ayn Rand novel, but without any talent or ambition. Yeah. Right. Which just basically means you do what you want and don't care when people get mad at you. Yes, you, because yeah. caring what other people think is prison. It, it, it dooms you. You cannot be authentic if you do that. And that is what kept every president in this fucking thing. I mean... Obviously, the fact that it was a giant cash cow for defense contractors is the reason that we would never leave of, uh, you know, that's the reason that the machinery in the deep state would never get out. But, you know, there are the president does have, as we see, the ability to just say no, because I have the I have a political stake in ending this thing. But all of them were too scared of what people were going to think. All the, of them were too big pussies. The most purportedly based Americans they're the same as everyone else. Their entire presentation is based on other people thinking it's cool. Whether yep. it's like a fucking 19 year old who thinks he's a knight uh, hospitalier, whether it's a fucking like guy who pretends he's a member of the shining path, even though he lives in silver spring, Maryland, whoever <laughs> we're all the same fucking asshole taking the same aesthetic uh, to make people think we're based. Oh, I, I don't care what you think of me. I'm going to do this anyway. No, the reason you're doing that is because of how much you care about people thinking about you. Yes. The most based kid at your school, you know who it is. It's the kid with like both types of acne who like tries to go super saiyan when there's a surprise <laughs> quiz. <laughs> People call him like a gay loser every day. He doesn't care. He's based. He's still going to do that. And he's still going to like scream at like a, the school administrative assistant, in the principal's office about like Naruto dubbing. He doesn't give a fuck. And that's Joe. Donald Looking Trump, Donald Trump isn't based. He's like, he, he's the, he doesn't care about anything but what people think about. Him. Yes, that's all he cares about. And that's the same thing as Obama. The last two presidents we have are absolute slaves to this. We, we know now that, I mean, Obama, one of the things that kept him in Afghanistan was that he was worried with David fucking Brooks. Oh, my God. Him. Yeah. He, he read a David Brooks op ed piece where David Brooks talked to top intelligence like intellectuals and defense analysts. And they all said, we're worried of, not about Obama, the man. We're worried about his commitment. We're worried about him, whether he has like the 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 stones, determination, the determination to just continue doubling down on an absolutely failed strategy, and then continuing to take the advice of all the same people who authored that failure. And like, here's the thing: I, what I saw, I, I watched Biden do a one-on-one -on -one interview with George Stephanopoulos on ABC News last night, and Stephanopoulos was like standing in for the entire like quote unquote objective media and giving him every opportunity to just be like Joe. Isn't it time for you to admit this was a mistake? I mean, do you, do you take responsibility for this? You know, what about the Taliban? I mean, isn't, couldn't this have been done better? And he was just like, no. <laughs> so you don't think this could have been handled, this actually could have been handled better in any way? No mistakes? No, I, I, I don't think it could have been handled in a way that there, we're going to go back in hindsight and look, but the idea that somehow there's a way to have gotten out without chaos ensuing, I don't know how that happens. I don't know how that happened. So for you, that was always priced into the decision? Yes. And, and I swear yes. to God, like, that, that's what I mean is like, I look, I did not think Biden was going to actually gonna pull out of Afghanistan. I did not believe that that was the case. I'm happy to be proven wrong about that. But like, he has legitimately done something that I did not think I would live to see an American president do. I thought we would be there And forever. we're seeing why. And we're seeing why. Everybody, everybody who matters is on the same page here. Uh, and 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 that even the fucking fake ass based nationalists who thought that Trump was going to do America first shit have now decided, uh, yeah, no, uh, Afghanistan, of course, we were going to get out, but we were going to do it the right way. It's like, yeah. fuck you. No, there's, there's no what, such man, thing. Man, What's man, the right way, you fucking dumbass. coward? Shut the fuck up. You're, and you're what, the big, and what, no one's a bigger bitch. Look at, the, look at them crying about like the Taliban go, getting those like weapons caches. Oh, no, they have guns. The thing they never had before. Oh, no, they know what a helicopter is. You fucking pussy. You think they're going to come kill your fucking bitch ass? You're going to die from the fucking slop you eat. Just like every other fucking American.
And then, and then what Stephanopoulos, when he said to Stephanopoulos, he was like, like, yeah, he was like, George, like, I, I see these images and I feel bad and I take responsibility for it. But he was like, look, regardless of what the intelligence said or like whether we got that wrong or like, yeah, like everything we said a month ago has been like, you know, dramatically proven wrong about how fast this would happen. But he said, there's no way that like America can pull out of a war like this or a country like that and not have chaos follow in our wake. There, there is no way. And like, by the way, speaking of like the uh, the MAGA people, I mean, I always go to Frank Stallone when I want to know like what, 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 what Trump's America. Yeah, is he, he about really this. is like the and, id there. Yeah. And he, he, he has like the absolute boomer brain poisoning of just being like he's been posting so strong this week, and it's just all about how Biden is the greatest disgrace in American history. This is the worst defeat America has ever suffered. And then he's like, but in the same Instagram post, he's like, yes, I know Trump was going to withdraw, but he would have done it smart. He wouldn't have let these scumbags have all of our weapons. It's like, oh yeah, he would have. Like, we would have. We would have spent the next twenty years going around Afghanistan collecting every single bullet and rifle yeah. that we spent a trillion dollars giving their fucking fake ass military. And then I saw some yeah, other. We're gonna guy do today. a gun buyback program. Talk about how <laughs> about how we we left behind forty year old Black Hawk helicopters oh, that, ch no. that that China will now have access to. And it's just oh, like, oh no, no. <laughs> they figured out flight. Oh, dude, oh, we're fucked. God. China's going to have the helicopter that got taken down by slingshots. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, no. Well, kiss everything goodbye. I'm learn Mandarin. Now oh, they, my God. These, like, yeah, no. Now they can crash into bin Laden's yeah. suburban home in, in Pakistan. <laughs> yeah. What do, like, okay, that thing is admit that Trump would have done it the right way. That's the thing Trump excelled at, logistics. <laughs> you know, no matter what you think about him, he always, he was a details guy, right? You know? We always saw that. And like, I, I just, I, I never thought I would see it, but like, like it just, he is facing, as, we, as I said last episode, a full court press of the entire media and his own party. Like, because not only would, not, would Trump not have done this, no other Democrat would have done this. Oh, no. Pete uh, Buttigieg no. or Kamala Harris or fucking uh, Elizabeth no. Warren would have fucking. No, uh, because, because the thing that they're more scared of than anything in the world is exactly what has happening now. People on TV saying that they're pussies. That's all People on TV about. saying that they don't, that they're, whatever word it is, irresponsible, don't have determination, whatever. That's what they're fucking terrified of. And he's None the of them only, would have been able to put up with it. And look, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, like, I mean, I'm not like, it's, it's hard to put too much confidence in Joe Biden or his administration or Tony Blinken's State Department. But if he, if he stands firm on this, it would be like a, a, a genuinely stunning thing to occur, which is in the face of like, a unified media and political pressure to just be like, what about our brave sons and daughters? What about these gold star families who now have to like, was, was their sacrifice of their child in vain to just simply say to break the sunk lost fallacy and just say, yeah, it's terrible, but like nothing we would, are going to do, uh, it would have changed the outcome. And I'm not going to like spend a single other dollar or life to fucking like make, to continue your fantasy of of like that this war was worthwhile or that, that an outcome would be changed. Did you see on that same interview where he said, well, yeah, there's like suffering everywhere. Do you think we should, do you think you've solved those problems by invading? It makes you go like, where was that Joe? Uh, when he voted for this war, when he voted for Iraq. I mean, look, he's a I piece of shit. 50 like, years, he's a piece of shit. But he's but the God right damn piece it, of shit. He was right. He's, he's the right piece yeah, of shit for this he's time a piece and of place. Shit we deserve. The turd has role is, has risen to the top of the punch ball. Yeah. You know, God, God is a greater writer of comedy than any human can be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, like there is obviously it is a double edged sword to be at the whim of a demented old man and, and hostage basically to his particular uh, weirdness. So and, and, you know, on one side you get he's willing to take the hit on Afghanistan and say fuck off. But on the other hand, even though it would be hugely to the be Democrats political fortunes to do things like, I don't know, get rid of student loan debt or uh, legalize weed federally. He's not going to do that because the same freak brain that's not that's fixated on getting out of Afghanistan is also fixated on uh, on on those policies. But so, hey, you know what? You take the good with the bad. And at yeah. least you have to be able to acknowledge that this is genuinely uh, a break from a, a pattern of uh, of a thought process in power that was not going to be shattered any other way. Nothing else was going to get us out of Afghanistan shy of some sort of massive catast natural catastrophe uh, or breakdown of law and order than a individual president who just didn't give a fuck. 
this is a bigger deal than the Iran deal. Like, I'm sorry, it just is. The Iran deal. Well, the Iran deal point, had supporters point, in the elite of like right. America's foreign policy, like power corridors or whatever you want right. to call it. And at this point, it might as well have never fucking happened. You know why they're cur- one of the reasons they're freaking out so much? They're not going to get Americans to redeploy. Exactly. They're not going to get us to go back exactly. in there. Joke ended it. You're not going to. We're not like, look, yeah. the Iran I, deal. Might, you're right. Might as well not have happened. They may try to restart it. I, you know, whatever. Like, I, I hope they do. But like, and the next president can come on and just erase that. There is no president that's going to come after Joe that is going to recommit American soldiers to Afghanistan. It's impossible. Yeah, we're done with it. We're done with it. And this is, I think, the most courageous act I've ever seen a president take in my lifetime. I don't think anything comes close even. And then, and then just the, the added benefit of just pissing on the British too. Did you see Love the thing that. where Theresa May was squawking on the floor of Parliament? I'm just the Guardian here. It says uh, uh, May delivered a scathing attack on the foreign policy and intelligence failures of, of Johnson and President Biden, suggesting the Prime Minister should have tried to form a NATO alliance to stay in Afghanistan without America. <laughs> a oh NATO, my a NATO God. alliance without America. Oh, good, good, luck. good luck with that, Put it together, sweetheart, Theresa. <laughs> <laughs> when this maybe, says, maybe maybe you could find some Ulster holdouts. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this. Was our intelligence really so poor? Was our understanding of the Afghan government so weak? Was our knowledge on the ground so inadequate? Or did we just think we had to follow the United States on a wing and a prayer and it would be all all right on the night, she said. It's just like, well, you've been doing that for like since World War II. So yeah, I mean, what would you now? Stop. Yeah. You're not about to stop now. What are you gonna do? Join the EU? Oh wait. <laughs> Uh, she is yeah i god bless Teresa. god bless her i hope she can link up with the uh dup again she can locate british hero the most heroic man ever in the history of the british isles johnny adair (laughs) to single-handedly set up like a meth ring in kabul yes they're gonna go to belfast and get like a dirty dozen of a bunch of (laughs) uff psychos Yeah, yeah yeah No, I mean, you know, more power to you. I hope you work that out. Good luck with the America list NATO. Um, you know, <laughs> great to hear from you again. I saw a bunch of labor MPs. Oh, all yeah. These, all these fucking losers are, you know, their equivalent of our like Abby Spangfeller uh, being like, I deployed there and I like, I do you know how bad this feels for me. I hope it feels awful. <laughs> I hope it's the worst day of your fucking life and I hope you never get better. Fuck you. I know it's just like this is the extraordinary thing it's like what we're talking about like Joe Biden as America's loser as America's loser and like America in the 21st century if you live here you're a fucking loser and it's just like he's the only one to admit it and like maybe there's there is some catharsis in that maybe there's some some hope some progress in just coming face to face with that fact and just admitting it like we lost the war in Afghanistan we do not get to have our way after that fact and we've lost it from like 2002 on. Yeah. There was no other outcome that, that could have occurred. None. You know, one of the biggest things I wanted from Bernie and like one of the reasons I felt so invested in that campaign is because the thing I wanted so badly was for America for a negotiated withdrawal from the world. That's what I wanted. I've wanted it for, for the longest time. And I thought maybe he could do it. Now it's like if he tried that, yeah, heart attack gun. But God damn it, I don't think we're going to get the rest of it like I want. Probably not. But like, no, God damn it, no. this isn't a great first step. And like if we can, if we as a nation, you know, because we've been riding on it, it just a, insane, fucked up optimism since the beginning. If we can now, after 300 plus years go, we're fucking losers. Oh, my God. We could actually get something done. Yeah, we could start fucking, like, I don't know, fixing the problems that make us all such miserable pricks. Yes. And you know what I mean? Like, and then I, I really love, too, among, like, the kind of, like, the neoconservative set, like, like Eli Lake and Noah Rothman and guys like that. They're like, mm, yeah, uh, I guess we're just done with forever war. Uh, so I suppose we'll, we're coming home from South Korea and Japan now. And it's like, yeah, good. No one wants us there. And, you know, I, I said this, but, like, I've, I've noticed the way in which uh, the term forever war or forever wars have become, like, sort of a, a, a cheap pejorative used by these people to kind of caricaturize the uh, point of view they're attacking. But, like, they're attacking it because it's a very succinct description of America's foreign policy that any normal person understands. And that, like, the fact that they support it 
is 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 uh, like transparently diseased to any person. And this is why this could be a watershed moment, because if Biden stands firm on this and then doesn't actually face any real political downside to it, then like I then I don't know, like has it damn broken in American culture? I don't know. I, like, is, is, like it's gonna it, will it will it be harder for these people to continue to do the shit they've they, they, like they've been doing for the, like their entire lives? I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's I don't want to get too optimistic here, but like I got just I, Irish Joe, man. Uh, credit where it's due. <laughs> credit. I am it's... joining Joe. If you need a Jared, I will work for <laughs> no money. Let's get out of everywhere. Let's get out of fucking Okinawa. Let's get out of South Korea. Let's get out of all these places. Come on, man. Germany? Yeah. Why are we still in why, Germany? Why are we in Germany, Jack? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I don't know what the future holds. I think I'm pretty much done predicting it because, like, yeah. who in the world would have predicted this? Not even Biden's biggest supporters back during well, the, last now year. His supporters They're all pissed, all pissed off. Pissed he did it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are all mad at him. I am. <laughs> They're like, we didn't vote for this. We didn't vote for this, Joe. No, we didn't I'm, want you to 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 to, to kill our uh, our boners about our imperial power. Uh, I, I, we have fantasies that we're going to fix the world at the at the end of a fucking drone uh, warhead. We don't want you harshing our fucking buzz. I know some Biden supporters who, you know, we're all, we're all in the ice cream parlor together now. I don't know what the national breakdown is. I saw one poll that said like it was still something like. 58 or 60 something Democrats like we're, we're in favor of this. Those are my people. Those are dude. We're getting in the big car. We're going to share a banana split. We're going to do some heavy petting. I, I love you guys. I love you guys. The 40 percent or however many. Fuck you. I mean, fuck you go it, vote for Abby Spangfeller. I don't care. I got, fuck you. It, it'll, that's like that's why this is an interesting moment, because you, you, you there you're seeing this full court press to try to convince everybody that this is a disaster and a horrible thing, even though it's what like 70% of Americans wanted they're saying, no, this is bad and trying to reframe it and, and use it now as a way to, you know, justify another, some sort of uh, future uh, military intervention that can be framed as a way to like reestablish that forgotten, that lost honor that we, that we left in the fields of Afghanistan. Uh, and it'll be very interesting to see if it's effective. Like right now, they're really pushing for it. But, you know, the big thing that Biden has uh, going for him is that we all nationally have the exact same dementia that he has and that we can't remember anything that happened two weeks ago. Well, in in terms of that, like pushback, I mean, like uh, I think there was one very interesting uh, NBC News had a very interesting article. uh, CIA warned of rapid Afghanistan collapse. So why did the U.S. get it so wrong? And the whole article is just a press release for the CIA where they were like, oh, no, 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 no. The intelligence community had exactly right. And Biden ignored our warnings. This is written by a guy named Ken Delanian. Oh, you may remember Ken Delanian as a guy who was exposed by The Intercept for running entire articles past his CIA handlers and essentially giving them editorial control. Emails like, "Uh, "Okay, thanks. And you wouldn't put out this. this, Yeah. Okay, thanks. And you wouldn't put out disinformation on this, would you? If it was true and you didn't want to confirm it, you'd say no comment. I ask only because covert operations are supposed to be deniable, right? And then subject, oh read, God. what can you tell me about this? And then another example here. Um, would you quibble with this? And then it's just a quote from his article. Occasionally, a smaller explosion ends the life of just one person, as when a missile hit earlier this month crashed into a room in Pakistan's tribal areas and killed Abu Yahya Alibi, Al-Qaeda's number two, officials say. So he's just sending this directly to the CIA, being like, this cool with you? Oh, my God, what a fucking worm. And like, okay, so Maduro said this on Venezuelan national TV. I wonder wonder what your guys' thoughts about this. He said... Either you have to believe that you, the U.S. intelligence is just so bad and incompetent that they literally didn't see this coming as quickly as it happened, or that they are literally seven days in Maying Joe, that they set him up for this by telling him, oh, yeah, yeah, it's fine, Joe, pull out, and then that they're setting him up for a big defeat um, so that they can like reassert their control. I think there's another, there's another explanation, and it's that they did tell him that this would happen, and he didn't fucking believe them, because why would you fucking believe them? Yeah. They've been lying for 20 years. 
Yeah. Like, oh, oh, you can't do it. It'll collapse. And they're like, uh-huh, sure. Tell me another one. That's why. That's what you've been telling us. That's what you've been telling us of every party for the last 20 years. Why we can't get out of here is because this thing's going to fall apart. Even though at the same time you're telling us it'll fall apart the second we leave, you're telling us that we're making a lot of progress and that we're actually building stuff. Those things are happening simultaneously. How am I supposed to believe literally anything you have to say? And then you just ignore them. And then it's like, oh, yeah, it turns out uh, they weren't lying that one time. And, you know, obviously... Uh, in terms of Ken Delaney, and I mean, like these people are the national security state. They are the intelligence community. The, 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 these are like paid, you know, operatives for the CIA. And like, you know, the way the way that they're, and like, look, we did the two Atlantic articles uh, last episode. Um, like, you know, the, the Atlantic is pushing this hard, and it's funny because I think like the media industrial complex is about to launch their own Afghanistan war which is writing articles like this for the next 20 years about every conceivable human rights disaster that happens in Afghanistan and laying it around the necks of everyone who wanted to get out of that war. Whereas they spent the last 20 years ignoring Eddie Gallagher collecting fingers and noses. Yeah. And us training death squads so that they would hang around, that they'd be there after we left. The people that we, the people that we killed with bombs, the people that just got shot up, the fucking boys we would sell to warlords. We killed vastly more people than the Taliban did. Absolutely, that's just yeah. a fact. One hundred percent. That's undeniable. Undeniable. And if that's the case, then if it's America plus Taliban equals this many deaths, then Taliban minus the United States. I'm sorry, it's going to be less. Anyone, it's going to be less violence. Anyone doing this bullshit, they want to mystify that fact, but it's fucking true. We killed, yes, we killed vastly more innocent civilians than the Taliban did. We trained death squads, and the, the fucking corrupt warlords we put in charge there um, were so bad that now most of the country, including various minorities who fought the Taliban for decades, are now basically like, okay, we're going to make a deal with them because this is just, this is ridiculous. Yeah, do you wonder, yeah... Do you do you wonder why it was so easy for them? Do you think that just suddenly everyone in Afghanistan is a fucking coward? Because I don't think that's the case. Yeah, no, they just defeated two, they, in the in the last forty years they defeated the two preeminent world empires in wars. I don't. You can accuse them of a lot, but being cowards, unwilling to face battle, is not one of the one thing no, you can say. They saw their options, and this is what they decided. What happens in the future, everything is up to them as it should be. This is the only way they can be in charge of their own destiny. And out of all of the, like, the, the nauseating spectacle of like, the people who authored every atrocity that happened in Afghanistan over the last 20 years, now pretending to care about the lives of the Afghan people, no, none of it is as nauseating as the fucking hand-wringing about Afghanistan's women and girls. And it's like, look, um, do I... It, it, Am I glad that the Taliban like is going to impose a religiously fundamentalist view of like law and society on like you know the, the women and young girls of Afghanistan? Like, no, that's not a, that's not a, a prospect to relish. But like, you didn't care when we were fucking the ones killing them. You didn't, you didn't care then, and like, and also like none of you ever gave a shit about the women and girls of Afghanistan ever. No one gave a shit. When it was Saudis going over there with more guns and money than anyone in these places had ever fucking seen and telling them that they basically have to believe this. Hey, take some of the stuff you already have and, and, and sort of run it through the Wahhabism filter and you can be our proxy armed group. No one gave a shit when they were doing these in any of these fucking places. No one fucking cares. They still sit on the boards of these fucking think tanks that are funded by the exact same fucking people. You don't give a shit. You don't give a shit when it's in Qatar. You don't give a shit when it's in Saudi Arabia. You don't give a shit about it anywhere except for the place where you can sell more war to Americans. Go fuck yourself. And, like, to, to that end, I mean, I just want to, like, uh, the, the worst of them is, of course, in the Atlantic. And this is Caitlin Flanagan writing in the Atlantic. Oh, an expert. Good. Yeah. She says, the week the left stopped caring about human rights... It's a Fuck remarkable you. how quickly liberals abandoned the women of Afghanistan. What year is this? Is this 2002? This is the exact same shit that they fucking said. This, they've been saying this exact stuff for 20 years. And what, is, what are the conditions that they're so proud of that the Americans were able to uh, dictate there in Afghanistan? Uh, uh, rule by child molesting heroin dealing warlords? What, where, it, women, it, where women's rights are at the bottom of the fucking list? In, in, in world rankings after 20 years? 
even if there is some genetic mutation where, for whatever reason, every woman in Afghanistan is somehow impervious to bullets and 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 and, and hellfire missiles, even then this wouldn't hold any fucking weight. Uh, she writes here. Get the hell out has, of course, been the liberal position for two decades until about 72 hours ago when Democrats suddenly became so concerned about the fate of Afghanistan, you'd think they were at a Dick Cheney revival meeting. You can call for American troop withdrawal for 20 years and you won't be politically or strategically wrong, but you need to be ready to take it on the chin when you get, to, uh, when you get what you ask for and the inevitable happen. Girls being forced into child marriage and forbidden to go to school or to leave the house without a male relative. It's just like, well, okay, like we just said, Joe Biden is taking this on the chin. Re rewind, what, what are you going to do about it now? Can I just do a, a rewind? What the fuck is a Dick Cheney revival meeting? <laughs> You've been writing <laughs> yeah. professionally for like 45 fucking years. What the fuck are you? What's a dick? Is he dead and they're bringing him back to life? Is it like? <laughs> yeah, that's oh, happened the, the, the several Dick times, Cheney, actually. The Dick Cheney fandom is dying. We're going to bring him back with a revival. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Who fucking edited this? Your kid? He goes, uh, she says here, is your conscience prickling? Don't worry. Senator Dianne Feinstein has everything under control. She is concerned about at-risk women and girls in Afghanistan. We aren't abandoning them. They will be covered by the bipartisan Protect Women and Girls' Rights in Afghanistan Act introduced by Feinstein and Senator Joni Ernst in May. Do you ever get tired of being lied to? According to this act, America will use the withholding of economic aid and the voice of the United States government to protect Afghan women. If the Taliban abuses those women, America will ensure that the militants are brought to justice. Of course, everyone behind this grotesque bit of fiction knows what we're bringing the Taliban to justice would require, the round-the-clock presence of massive military power not the inside voice of Senator Dianne Feinstein. We could not stay in Afghanistan forever, probably sh never should have gone there in the first place, and we were deluded when we thought we could track Osama bin Laden to a cave in the northern mountains. But when nearly 3,000 of your countrymen and women are blown to bits on an ordinary Tuesday morning, you do not take kindly to the nation that welcomed their killers. Okay, if that's the case, imagine uh, uh, innocent men, women, and children getting blown to bits every fucking day for 20 years by America. And then Im imagine what we felt after 9-11, imagine what they feel about us. Including, including the precious women and girls. The thing, yeah, 9-11 every fucking day. Um, I'm just like, this article is so nauseating, but just at the end here, uh, she just says here, uh, the reason, aside from honor and quagmires and the tender mercies of Dick Cheney, that we stayed in Afghanistan so long and at such a great expense with nothing to show for it except the safety of that small sliver of women and girls is that for all of America's sins, our default position is freedom. For all of our sins, we are a great country. That's easy to forget. <laughs> Last year in this magazine, Barack Obama made what has got to be one of the most astonishing statements ever offered by a former president. I'm not yet ready to abandon the possibility of America. That was fast. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, to holy shit. Well, yeah, it seemed to have fucking worked out for you. Yeah, he got he got his game master Anthony fantasy of all the characters from every movie and TV show coming together for a huge birthday party. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, you got fucking like Nora Jones and Silento to come to your birthday party. You've never been on the fucking losing side personally of anything. Yeah, it worked out for fucking you. For a bewildering two decades, we had the political will and a large enough volunteer military to spend our blood and treasure protecting the human rights of some of the most powerless people on Earth. Girls. In no other country would that story even be possible. Goddamn right it's not possible in any other country because no other country assumes for themselves the right to be the empire or the military rulers of the world. Oh, yeah. Our most precious resource, girls. We need, uh, no, no, no. It wasn't all the heroin and pipelines and fucking rare earth minerals that are in Afghanistan. We were there to protect the precious resource of girls. And by the way, Caitlin Flanagan and everyone else at the Atlantic supported the war in Iraq and Afghanistan in the first place. So it's a little rich of them to come now. Well, of course, in hindsight, we never should have done any of this. But now that we have done it, we have to stay there uh, forever because of that small sliver of like Afghan girls going to school, which, you know, when they weren't going to school, they were being fucking murked for sport by U.S. Navy SEALs. That's what Dev grew. When Dev grew got into the shower with their friends and were fucking jamming Anabar needles into their ass and fucking ripping coke off of their, off of their M4A ones, that's what they were talking about. We're doing this for girls. We're cutting all these fingers off for girls. What the fuck are you talking about? I hope you don't actually believe this. If you actually believe this, you're just a, you're, you're a liability. You are going to crash your car into a fucking school bus because you think that your gas pedal dispenses candy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's so nauseating because, like, look, you can, it, it's just this idea like, oh, America is the only country in the world that would ever fight for freedom. 
Well, it's just like, well, if you spend 20 years and then, and then you, you, can, you can't have that thought and then follow it up by saying, well, it's a war, atrocities happen. Because you can't spend 20 years doing atrocities to a country full of people and then be like, well, we were doing it for their freedom. Is it being occupied by another country, not freedom? I mean, couldn't you, the Taliban could make this exact same argument. Hey, sorry about the atrocities, but our freedom not being occupied by a foreign power is just that important. We're the only, we're the only militia that cares about that type of thing. And, you know, they're also the only organized group that is capable of, like, providing basic governance to Afghanistan at all. Yeah, they're, being, they're way more effective administrators of, like, uh, civic needs than the government that we built there. They're better at fucking court. They're better. Hey, if you're, if you're a liberal who, who's freaking out about COVID, Taliban is, has way better COVID uh, measures than <laughs> the Afghan government does. They're taking I mean, it way more seriously. Ghani, Ghani is such a fuck you to that country that we put that guy in charge. What a fuck you. What a, just if nothing else, if nothing else, if the bombs, if the seals, if the fucking rampant stealing, if the fairing, the helicopters back and forth for Burger King didn't give people this message, putting that fucker Ghani in there, nothing tells people you don't give a fuck about them. Like that, the like, guy who the guy who ran away with 160 million dollars in Louis bags. <laughs> Felix, I love that post you shared of like it was like yeah, Ghani flees the country with 169 million dollars of like the <laughs> of the Afghan treasury just in bags <laughs> going to Dubai or whatever. And the guy quoted it and he was like, "Stop pocket watching." <laughs> yeah, no, I was saying like you don't know that he didn't already have that. Like maybe he was like he like worked like 80 hours a week as an Uber driver, and he it's was just always like, driving during your surge time. It's just like, where like where do these people get this? I mean, like, but like maybe in two thousand two, you could feel good about like our allies that we're replacing the Taliban with. But like by twenty twenty one, you cannot any nobody can say that the people we put in charge were like less evil than the Taliban. Yeah, yeah, no. it's not like we we managed to find like the one group of people more morally repellent than the yeah. Taliban and put them yeah. in charge. They love yeah. heroin and child molestation way more than the Taliban and the Afghans had people that they thought were good we were but you know what country are you dealing with here the country that loves freedom told them no you're gonna take this fucking asset and you're gonna smile here you go here's karzai is it like one of the current heads of the taliban a guy who worked for like voice of america for 20 years yeah or no they have they have this like figurehead guy who they say will be president yeah uh, the president. he looks yeah. i was saying i was saying he looks like he would get killed during the house of the rising sun montage <laughs> in a casino. he's like dude, you put him in where a are you going with, jag off yeah you put him in a lineup with all those other guys it's like one of these things is not like the other like everyone has these gaunt fucking faces and like cool scars and shit and like yeah holy shit you've been eating like a fucking fucking two grains of rice a day and like never slept not besides your AK. And then you just have this like fat guy looks like he could be from Chicago. Who's like, <laughs> Hey, when are the girls coming in? <laughs> He's wearing these fucking transparent ass aviators. I love him. He's wearing transition he lenses. Yeah. <laughs> He's awesome, man. It's going to be sad when like, yeah, the, the Pashtun Joe Pesci is like, <laughs> but he wasn't one of us. So he had to go. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get I gotta get Biden on the phone. I gotta have a conversation with the man. <laughs> That's Boris Johnson, apparently. Yeah, I know. Oh, Boris, don't yeah, don't go to your car that's partner near a snowbank. <laughs> oh, no, man. Joe is Remo Gaji. Yeah. Joe is the fucking yeah. boss in the Why courthouse. Take a Why take a chance? In, <laughs> sucking in oxygen. <laughs> yeah. And he's but he's not pretending. He's not pretending for the fucking yeah. jury. He really is. <laughs> It, it, like I said, like uh, Caitlin Flanagan in the Atlantic, this is the opening salvo of their 20 year war that will produce the exact same outcome if they didn't write an article at all. They will be telling every fucking American that they are bad people for this. From the time your child is born to the time that your, uh, your child gets in trouble at Brown University because he <laughs> tried to do like a hip hop musical about Afghanistan. <laughs> they will be writing this article. We failed, we failed as a people. To keep to keep our sacred honor. That's all we do is fail. And we found our guy. We found <laughs> all our we failure. do is lose, lose. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what. And another one. And another one. <laughs> another 